Welcome to Electron Line. Now that we have the Schrodinger equation in the format of a time-independent equation, and here we have it, now we're going to try this exercise where we're given a wave function that only depends on position, and it's a wave function presumably for a particle with mass m moving in a single dimension and the potential energy equal to zero. Well, that makes it a little bit easier because that means this term right here will go to zero since v is going to be zero. But what we need to do now is we need to find the second derivative of this function or this wave equation with respect to x and plug it in here and then see if the left side does indeed equal the right side. Let's find out. First of all, we're going to take the first and then the second derivative of that wave function. The first derivative is going to look like this. The first derivative of the wave function with respect to x is equal to the derivative as a sign is the cosine and the derivative of the angle is k. So this becomes ka times the cosine of kx plus, well here we have the derivative of the cosine is the negative sign. Well actually this becomes therefore minus and the derivative of the angle is k. So minus k times b times the sine of kx. Now we're ready to take the second derivative of that, and let's see what we get. So the second derivative of the wave function with respect to x is then the derivative of this. The derivative of the cosine is a negative sign, the derivative of the angle is k, so this becomes minus k squared a sine of kx. And then this, the derivative of the sine is a cosine, so we have minus, and the derivative of the angle is k, k squared b times the, oop, not the sine anymore, now it's again the cosine of kx. Now let's see what happens when I factor out a negative and a k squared. So this becomes equal to negative k squared times, and I'm left with an a sine of kx, plus, because I factor out a negative, b times the cosine of kx, and then if I look at my original function, that's exactly what my original function is, which means I can replace this portion in the brackets by the wave function. That means this is equal to minus k squared times the wave function. And that's equal to the second derivative of the wave function with respect to x. Now I'm ready to substitute. Let, let's plug this into our equation here. So the Schrodinger equation becomes, on the left side, minus h bar divided by 2m times this, which is equal to minus k squared, and, whoa, I think I have a mistake here. Yes, 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 that should be h bar squared, not h bar, that's h bar squared, so this is h bar squared, and minus k squared times the wave function. Plus, now this is going to go to zero because we said the potential is zero, potential energy is zero, and that equals the energy times the wave function, and we'll just leave it like that. All right. Now notice that I have on the left side h bar squared k squared divided by 2m, and the right side I have the total energy of the particle. Now the total energy of the particle has to be equal to, well, since potential energy is equal to zero, should be equal to the kinetic energy. So next, to show that the left side equals the right side, we have to find a new expression for the energy here. And remember that in this case, the energy is only the kinetic energy because we set the potential energy equal to zero. So we can say that the kinetic energy can be written as p squared divided by 2m. And that, of course, would be equal, in this case, to the total energy since v is equal to zero. So that means I can then replace this by p squared over 2m. So now we have minus h bar squared times k squared divided by 2m is going to be equal, oh, and notice I have a minus times a minus, that makes it a plus. And that should equal, oh, and I can't forget my function here, my wave function. That should equal the energy, which now can be expressed as the momentum squared divided by twice the mass of the particle times the wave function in x only. 
Notice now we have a 2m here, we have a 2m here, we have the wave function on both sides, but here we have a p squared and there we have an h bar squared and k squared. But if I go over here, I realize that the momentum of a photon is indeed equal, equal to h bar times k, and we're making the leap that we did the same thing as we did for the Schrodinger equation, that that can also then be taken for the particle. So we're going to replace the momentum of the particle by the equivalent of the momentum of a photon as h bar times k. So that means that on the left side I have h bar squared k squared divided by 2m times the wave function, which is equal to, when I replace this, I get h bar squared k squared over 2m times the wave function. Now you can see that the left side is exactly equal to the right side, which means that we've now shown that this is indeed a proper wave function for the Schrodinger equation, or the, I should say, the time-independent Schrodinger equation for a particle that moves in one dimension. And that's how we do that.